Hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, by popular demand, Bill Faulkner with Faulkner Custom Rods, and I'm here today to do a video for how to prep and shape your guide feed. Um, thanks, Randall, for the request. I've been meaning to get around to it, and I finally have. Um, why do we prep and polish guide feed? Number one, it makes wrapping much easier, especially on short wraps. Number two, it gives us a much cleaner and more attractive looking wrap and finished guide wrap. It prevents guide foot cracking and chipping of the finish at the guide foot and blank junction over time. And when you go about doing repairs and seeing rods that have been heavily used, I see less wear and blank damage over and over when guides have been properly shaped and polished. So we're going to try to accomplish three things. We're going to reshape or recontour the guide foot, especially right on the tip where we wrap it. We're going to treat the bottom of the foot where it sits against the rod blank so that there's no damage as it flexes over time in use. And then finally, we're going to polish the, the whole thing to remove any burrs or imperfections and make sure we have a flawless finish. So what are you going to need? You're going to need either a stone or a sandpaper wheel that's fairly fine and a method to power it. You're going to need some chainsaw files in various sizes that match the diameter of the rod blanks you typically wrap. You're going to need either a wire brush or some type of scotch bright wheel that you can use to polish the guide feet when we're done shaping them. And ideally, if you can find one, you need some kind of guide grinder holder or fixture you can use to keep your fingers safe while you're grinding. All right, so we're going to start grinding here, uh, and I'm going to use black guides so that you can see what I'm doing. I've got a large size 30 spinning guide here, and I'm using a fine wheel, turning it about 2,000 RPM. I'm going to start to contour the tip end of the seat of the guide with very light pressure. You should not see sparks fly. You should not see the metal discolor. You should not see a bunch of heat build up. I'm just very, very gently with very light pressure. Think of it like you would polish metal with a buffing wheel and a buffing compound. Very, very gentle pressure. And I'm gonna to try to accomplish a couple of things. I'm gonna to try to generally flatten out the contour of the guide, make it a longer, less steep taper. And then I'm also gonna pay particular attention uh, just to the very point of the guide, right where the thread's gonna begin climbing it, right where it sort of touches the rod blank and just go slow, very gentle pressure, almost like filing your fingernails. Uh, I'm not putting any kind of heat or pressure on the guide, and I'm gonna both wobble it back and forth to flatten it and deal with just the very tip edge, you see, to get the appropriate shape that I'm looking for. And once it's good, then that one's ready to go on to the next step. So now we'll take on a couple other guide shapes. So here I'm using a rel this is a relatively large old hardloy uh, guide, um, and it's double footed, so it doesn't really matter what side you start with. But you're generally going to dress the very edge, as well as flatten and try to make it a, a more gradual ramp, not such a steep climb for the thread up the guide foot. Again, very light pressure. Um, and the lighter the pressure you use, the cleaner of a surface finish you get and the less polishing it needs. You see I'm kind of flattening it out here and contouring it. It's very easy to see with a black guide by the, the paint you're taking off, uh, how much of the guide that you've addressed and, and touched. But that's, that's pretty good. That's about it. And I'm just going to touch the very end. And again, this guide's not getting hot. Sparks are not flying off of it. Um, in very, very gentle pressure, just really light pressure. Go slow. You can't put material back on, but you can always remove more later. So that one looks pretty good. We got a good shape and contour. It's pretty even on all sides. So we're going to switch it around here and do the double foot side or the double frame leg side. Um, actually, I guess I'm going to touch it just a hair more based on the taper at the very tip. Very, very light pressure. Now, the thing to watch out for with these guides that are double foot, on this side I'm shaping on now where it has the double uh, frame feet, you want to be real careful you don't, while you're paying attention to the guide foot, you don't accidentally feed those frame legs into the wheel because it will take the finish right off and that's, that's not what we're looking for. So again, we're just flattening and sort of creating a very gradual taper and depending on the shape of the guide, 
uh, you may have more or less work to do. These are all Fuji guides in the video and they're really well formed and shaped to begin with. You could wrap all of them without really having to dress them. So I'm not having to do much at all. If you use a cheap crummy guide, you may have to remove and recontour considerably. It's not necessary with these Fujis, even with these old hard boys. So here is now, uh, this next guide is another double foot. This is a very modern, um, this is a K-Wag, K-W-A-G, a B-K-Wag in this case, um, a black frame with an alkanite ring. Again, you want to be very careful of those extended double guide frame legs, but they don't need much work. I mean, you see just a really quick touch there and it's about ready to go. I'm going to flatten it, I think, a little bit more here, but they're already actually ground a bit and so they don't need much, but it is going to flex more and it is going to create a much more attractive and gradual transition and allow you to use smaller thread and start the, start the guide wrap just literally right on the foot. I, I generally don't like more than about two or three wraps uh, of thread off the guide foot. No sense adding a long wrap, which is more thread, more epoxy, more stiff area, more weight. So we're just, and you can see I, I've taken the finish off most of it, but the pre-ground part, you see there's still a little bit of that pre-ground part that's black at the very tip. So I'm just gradually, gently, very light pressure. Again, almost like you're filing your fingernails. Very, very light pressure, no heat. No, e I'm not even discoloring the metal. I'm not taking the heat temper out, if you can see that. And, and we're ready to go. That one looks great. So some people think you, you shouldn't uh, shape really small guides, and I disagree. I, I dress the very, very tip of even my smallest guides. So here's a size 6, uh, B-K-T-A-G-6. So uh, black frame, uh, alkanite guide ring, single foot, uh, tip section guides. And so I'm just putting this on a, a, a small screw with a little O-ring, and all that does is let me help hold on to it. And man, if you thought I was barely putting pressure on the others, I mean, this is a feather kiss. I'm just barely feeding the guide foot, the very tip of the guide foot, that's all, into the stone, very gently, no pressure, not creating hardly any noise, just a kiss. I mean, we're just literally going to just dress that edge up a little bit. Sorry, I got that a little out of focus in checking it. Um, but you can see there, I'm just the very tip of it. And, and I can literally use silk thread and start the wrap on the end of that guide foot now and fly rod if I want to. Um, and so here is a BMNAT. These are awesome heavy duty tops you can use for either casting or spinning applications in salt water. And uh, they come with a foot that you can wrap over, which makes for a very, very secure uh, installation, but I, I shape these too. So again, just the very tip. You can see a little bit of black right there on the very tip. I'm just barely wearing, cut, taking it down in shape and creating a very gradual taper until all that black paint is gone off the tip. And then we're ready to go. Very little material being removed. Very little heat, very little pressure. And you can see these have, by virtue of using a fine wheel, these have a very good finish just immediately after grinding. They really could probably just about be used like this, but now we're going to go to the chainsaw files. Now what we're going to do with these chainsaw files, you see I have four different sizes. You're going to grab one that's about the size of the diameter of the blank where that guy is going to be wrapped. And you're just, they, they're one way, they run from the blunt square end towards the handle a tang. You're just going to give it a couple of light strokes. Um, again, the pressure that I'm applying here is, is maybe about like you'd use a pencil eraser on, on some gentle paper. I'm, I'm pressing, but it's, it's not terribly firm, and most of the pressure is along the file, not down into the file. So I'm going to, you notice I rotate the guide. So if I stroke one way, rotate it so the other foot is facing forward, rotating it again here. Just a few light strokes, you'll feel it. There's a few burrs and imperfections on the bottom of the guide, and as soon as you uh, hit it a couple of times, those are all gone. And that's, that's all you've got to do. Again, very minimal uh, amount of metal that you're removing. I'm going with a smaller file here for a smaller guide, you know, about the same diameter of the blank where that guide might be located. Um, and again, I'm reversing the guide two strokes one way, then one stroke the other way. And, and this one just goes so easy because these modern guides are already contoured, they're not flat. 
And then for this little tip section guide, I've got a very small file that kind of matches the tip section of the blank where it'd be wrapped and very little, just, you know, two strokes and, and we're good to go. So if we look now at these guides, once they've had the bottom, I, I want to make sure we're clear. We're not removing very much metal at all. Uh, and, but you are creating for a, these all have a little bit of a taper and contour, sort of a concave shape to them, but you're just removing any burr you created by grinding the guide foot. You're removing any imperfection or burr that's on the bottom of the foot from manufacturer and just kind of creating a smooth, even contour for it to sit flush against the blank. Now for our final step here, I'm using a wire wheel. You should be wearing eye protection in case you throw a bristle, but at about 2,000 to 2,500 RPM with very light pressure, I'm just gently covering the top part of the guide that I originally shaped, as well as the bottom part of the guide that I hit with the chainsaw file, and I'm checking to make sure there's no burr, no edge, no sharpness to anything, just kind of gently. and I. I'm using even less pressure than I used on the stone, just very, very light pressure. High speed with a stainless steel brush or a Scotch-Brite wheel is, is going to do everything you need. You do not need to dig into it. If you are getting burr or tool marks or it's marking up and doing anything other than polishing the surface of the metal to shine in a real smooth, even finish, then you're either using not enough speed or too much pressure or both. So again, 2,000 to 2,500 RPMs. Here I've got this steel wire wheel in the Renzetti. It's safe, this particular wheel, up to about 3,600 RPM. So I keep it down around 2,250, 2,000, something like that. And very light pressure. Again, if you can hold on to them, you can just, uh, you don't have to use a fixture. If you want, you can put them in a guide grinder holder or something like that. I'm going to be very careful feeding your fingers and fingernails into the wheel because it will hurt you, but that's about it. And I did not use a chainsaw file on this MNAT style top, but I am going to go back and just gently kind of clean it up and hit and make sure we don't have any burrs or any edges as a result of the grinding. And so again, if you do this with very light pressure at the right speed, what you get is a very, very clean and polished finish. I mean, these things are smooth and ready to wrap on the rod. So we're taking two guides, one prepped and one unprepped. Put them side by side here. Now, which one of those do you think is gonna wrap easier? Bear in mind, this is a size 30 guide. Obviously, one's gonna be a little easier to make the transition. All right, so uh, in parting, a couple of things. Um, obviously, we're using power tools. Anytime you're using power tools, you need to take proper safety precautions. You need eye protection, you should use respiratory protection, and you, you may wanna use ear protection, right? So uh, always, 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 when working with power tools, be safe, okay? The, the real key here is don't remove too much material too quickly. You can always go back and remove more, but you can't put it back on once you've taken it off. Um, so be careful. Um, the third thing is don't start this for the first time and learn all your lessons on a black titanium slim SIC Fuji guide, okay? Get some guides you salvaged off an old rod or a broken rod or a rod repair or something and practice on those. Um, it's not hard. You saw me do it. It's a quick, easy process, but you'll make mistakes. And it's better that you make the mistakes and figure out which wheel is the right wheel and which speed is right and everything else on a scrap guide. I do not recommend trying this on one of your premium quality guides first step, okay? So go slow, expect a learning curve and give yourself a little room. And then finally, you know, uh, full disclosure, you probably are gonna void the warranty of your guides by doing this. Um, I don't care, it's never bothered me. I shape everything and I have for 20 years. I've torn down and repaired enough rods to see the difference in wear and damage to the blank as a result of guides that weren't prepped versus those that were. And then just the final parting thought, right? Notice I didn't call this video guide grinding, right? We called it shaping and polishing. It's a gentle process without a bunch of heat, without a bunch of pressure. You shouldn't have sparks flying. 
go gentle. Um, and I think you'll be glad you did. It certainly makes it easier to wrap them, certainly makes it easier to finish them. So really appreciate all the feedback from the folks who are watching the videos. Please like and subscribe. Um, thank you again to Randall, my boy in Kentucky, for staying on me about providing this video. Randall, I hope it helps you. And, and thanks to everybody else who made the recommendation for the shaping and polishing video. Um, I'd love to hear what else you guys want to see as we're in quarantine with coronavirus. I have some time early in the mornings and in the evenings working around my real job to, to spend time doing this. Love to share the knowledge. It seems like it's helpful. If it is, let me know uh, what you'd like to hear and we'll go from there. Until then, I hope somebody's going fishing and uh, everybody stay safe.